Sorry to break it to you, Ben Cooper, but you are not the pause king. You are not. In fact, that title belongs to a man by the name of Hideki Matsuyama. Put some respect on his name. Put some respect on my name. I do agree with you. I like to pause. In fact, it saved my golfing career. And that's why today, we're gonna talk about the benefits of adding a pause to your swing at home. All right, so before we get attacked by all the Ben Cooper groupies, uh, I wanna first say I like Ben. I think he's a great golfer and, and I definitely like his swing. However, I like Hideki's swing a lot more. And there was a point shortly after college where I was really having issues driving the golf ball. Believe it or not, now I'm in long drive. I implemented the Hideki pause into my swing and it really changed the trajectory of where my career was headed. So if we break down some of the issues I had growing up, it stems back to some of the childhood lessons I had where I was taught to pull my arm away from the chest as fast as I could. Okay, so I was trying to speed this arm up as quickly as I could through the transition. Now, the more I did that, the worse I hit it. And what happened was, by pulling the arm away from the chest, it started to apply a force to the handle that started to stand the shaft upright and it got me very steep through the transition. Now, obviously it's impossible to rotate with a steep shaft, so what my body did was it started to recognize that steep shaft and then I figured out, well, if I slide my pelvis laterally, I could deliver the club somewhat in a considerable fashion. Because there was zero rotation in the equation, what started happening was my swing direction started getting too far into out and the byproduct of that was the face was too open relative to the target. Not a great combination. When I was 22 years old, I was basically at a point where I wanted to give the game up and I said to myself, I'm gonna give myself one more chance. So I, I flew out to California, saw my friend Dana Dahlquist, and one of the things that we, we sat and chatted about for three days was the difference of how a tour player rotated their body and how I was rotating my body. Obviously, we knew that steep shaft was not good, but the question was, how could I change that? So a lot of the focus me and Dana put was into this lead arm. So I'd go to the top, I'd leave this arm up, and by leaving it up and staying pinned, it would force my body to rotate and tilt in an effort to deliver the club to the golf ball. Now obviously this was hard to implement into my swing and the only way we could change this was by doing pause drills to where I would go to the top, I'd pause, and what the pause did was it allowed me enough time to understand that I need my lower body to start the downswing not my arms. So there was a, a recalibration period where I had to tell my brain what the new order or roadmap was in the downswing. Now that being said, keeping the arm up across the chest for too long could eventually have its own negative effects. However, for me, this particular phase was the appropriate stepping stone that eventually allowed me to go to the top, change direction and allow the overlapping to be much more dynamic to where the arm was loading across the chest and then eventually firing off. Uh, this was a stepping stone to allowing me to get my lower body activated in my golf swing. Now, if you go to the top, you keep that arm up for too long and you keep it pinned, there could potentially be some negative side effects to that. So I understand that this was a phase and eventually we have to get to a point where that arm is dynamically loading, okay, but then eventually firing off the chest, much like a frisbee. Oh God. What the f Richard? Where that arm loads and then it slings off the chest. In order for that to happen, I had to gain awareness of how to get my lower body moving through the transition and the pause drills were perfect to get that done.